Hey guys, welcome back. So the question that I often see is, do I need drawing skills to design in Adobe Illustrator? Well, the answer is no. You don't need drawing skills to design in Illustrator. In this video, I'm going to walk you through how to get started in Illustrator, even if you don't have drawing skills. So we'll focus on the basics of the pen tool and how you can start building your vector art. So let's go ahead and get started. So guys, the real purpose of drawing is to get your ideas out onto paper. Even if it's a simple sketch, this helps you to visually communicate your ideas, especially when you're working on a project or working directly with a client or even with a design team. This kind of helps you to show other people what you're thinking about as far as like creating something. So we'll elaborate on sketching in another video, but in this video, we're going to focus on creating our design from reference images. First, we'll need to figure out what are you trying to create? What project do you want to work on? So you need to do some digging before you just jump in. So knowing these things ahead of time is going to help you plan and prepare in creating your project. So guys, a little story time. When I first started on my graphic design journey, this was back in 2005. One of the very first classes that I took was a course on Adobe Illustrator. It was really how to use the program inside and out. And one of the first projects that we did in class was learning how to use the pen tool. What we actually did was we took reference images and trace them in Illustrator. So I think this exercise is pretty important. And if you can try to do this a couple of times, if you're just learning graphic design and early on in your journey, or if you just need to brush up on certain skills in Illustrator, whatever your level is, I think this is a great way to practice not only do you practice learning the tools in Illustrator, but the repetition also trains your brain to remember the steps. So before we get started, we should have a basic idea of what we want to create. So let's go ahead and jump into finding that inspiration or that reference image. We can take a deep dive into Google search. Um, I would recommend going into Pinterest. Uh, there's also another website which is called unsplash.com and let's go ahead and jump right in. The first thing that I would actually do is do a Google search if this is where you're comfortable finding inspiration or reference images, you can go ahead and search it onto Google. The next place that I would recommend is Pinterest. You can literally find anything here that you have an idea for. You can download the image onto your desktop. Or the other place that I would also recommend is unsplash.com. And this is a website for royalty-free images that you can use. I often come here to find reference images or to use as shop images for my creative market products. So I'll find some really amazing photos here. Let's go ahead and jump into Illustrator. All right, guys. So once you've jumped into Illustrator, created a new document, so you can literally choose any size document you want. For what I chose, I just chose an eight by 10. You can always customize the document size later on. Let's go ahead and jump in. Make sure we have a basic idea of what we want to create, finding your inspiration reference images from some of the three sources that I recommended. Once you have your actual reference image, you can go ahead and drag it into here. The third thing is also repetition, building up your Adobe Illustrator skills with continued practice. 
I think that you'll be able to become an expert as well. Now let's go ahead and close that layer. I actually wanted to show this to you guys. So this is an old project that I actually did as a test. This was back in 2007 when I was testing to become a product illustrator. It was a small design studio in San Diego that I was working for at the time. You know, the way that I actually had gotten this role was that I did a design test for them. So I took a reference image of something that I found online and this is the reference image here. The way that I actually broke this whole thing down as a shape, so I started with the bigger overall shape and then what I did was I continued adding different parts like this area here. I even traced the inside of this and cut it out with a pathfinder tool. And I'll show you how to do that later. I've used some gradients here. I've used opacity tool and have used different tones and tints of colors to make it look like there's some shading in different areas here. You know, I wouldn't say it's perfect. Definitely could use some tweaks, but I wish I had the actual illustrator file. Uh, but guys, this is from 2007. I've switched five different MacBook Pro laptop, so I, unfortunately I lost the original file. But I wanted to show you guys this example to show you what is possible in Adobe Illustrator. So the image that I actually found to give you guys this demonstration is this image right here. So you can do one of two things. You can either drag the image from your desktop and place it right directly into your Adobe Illustrator file. The other way that you can do this is, let's do this again, is to go to File and we're gonna go to Place and we'll go ahead and locate the image and then we'll go ahead and click on our canvas and there you have it. So those are two ways that you can drag your image into Adobe Illustrator. And then from here, let's resize this down just a little bit smaller. There we go, and place it in the center. We'll go ahead and lock that layer. If you haven't made a new layer, go ahead and make a new layer above your reference image. This is the layer that we're going to draw on. We can also zoom this in. And if you're new to the pen tool, make sure that you don't have a fill here for a solid line so we can click on the none no fill and then that way we just have black for now as the outline we'll go ahead and click on our pen tool here or you can press p on your keyboard as a shortcut so our strategy to trace this image is we're going to start by tracing the outside of this image the entire outline of this and then We'll go back in and trace the smaller shapes inside, and I'll show you how to use the Pathfinder tool for subtracting some of the shapes out. You can really start anywhere on the outside. So let's go ahead and start here in this corner. You can go ahead and click and drag, and you see these curved handles here. I'm not letting go of the mouse, or if you're using a trackpad, I'm just holding down our button, and then we can go ahead and let go. You see this, if you kind of zoom in and you hover over it, there is an upside down V. That's actually the anchor point. And so what that does is if you click on it, it'll get rid of this handle going up. And so this actually ends the point right here. So we'll go ahead and click on that. And then we'll go ahead and click and drag again so that we can get a curved line. And we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to click on this anchor point and then we're going to keep going and tracing the outside of this image. So click and drag and then go ahead and click on the point. And then here gets a little bit tricky with the different curves. We can always go back and fix this. Let's just go ahead and work through whatever image you have and then just keep going. We can fix the points if it's not exactly aligned. Like, so for example, for this one, I want it to be a little bit lower. So what you can actually do is press command or control on your keyboard. And you see how this turns into the white arrow. That is the direct selection tool. So you can click 
and drag and pull it down. Once you still have your finger on the button, you can go ahead and take this handle and also adjust it. And then once you let go of the button, it goes back to the pen tool. And then we can go ahead and keep working through this. Go ahead and hold this down and then we'll click. And then this part right here is a little bit tricky. So if you need to do a smaller shape and then go ahead and click and then this one kind of curves curves this way so do that then we'll zoom out a little bit anytime that you need to move these points around you can always press command or control on your keyboard and then you can move the handles or the points around and then we'll just go back and then as soon as you let go of the button it'll go back to the pen tool so we'll just keep working through this. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and speed up this part of the tutorial. All right, so once you finished the shape and closed it, you saw over there when you hovered over, there was like a zero. So that just means that we closed the shape. So this is a finished shape. So if you had wanted to choose a color, if you open up the swatches and toggle between the fill and the stroke by pressing X on your keyboard, and then you can choose a color. So then you see that it will fill in the whole entire shape, but so we don't want to do this just yet. Yet. Now what we want to do is we'll go ahead and trace the inner shape so that this is kind of a cutout on the inside and we'll do the same with this area right here. I'll show you how to use the Pathfinder in just a second because that's going to be super helpful when you're creating shapes and objects and even illustrations. The next thing we want to do is let's go ahead and create the inner shape here. So I'm doing the same exact thing. We're clicking and then dragging and then getting the curve, the shape of the curve that we want. And then we can go ahead and click here to end the point and then we'll go back. You can press command or control on your keyboard and it'll bring up this direct selection tool and you can move the point down as you see fit. And then once you let go, it'll go back to the pen tool as well. And then I'm just gonna keep going until I finish this shape right here. Now that's finished. If you see points that don't seem as exact, you can also add more points on your shape. So you see the plus sign right here. If you click on any part of this line, so if I went ahead and clicked, you'll see that it added an extra point. So if you press command and it'll bring back the direct selection tool and you can move your point to wherever you want so that you can adjust this just a little bit. Let's just go ahead and fill this outer shape. Let's say we wanna fill this in with this same exact color and press I on our keyboard for the eyedropper tool. Once you have that, let's go ahead and click. And so what that actually did is it filled in this entire shape. In order to cut this area out to show that this is kind of like the handle for the bag, we'll open the Pathfinder palette so you can get there by going to Window and going to Pathfinder. We want to select the bigger shape and then holding down Shift, click on this smaller shape on the inside will click on this one right here, the second icon, which is minus front. And so we wanna hold down option and then we'll click. What it actually did was it cut out that piece. So if you're ever wondering how to create a shape, this is kind of how you do it. So to go back and finish our shape, what we can actually do is we can go ahead and press the slash button on our keyboard, or you could just go to no fill right here. And then we'll toggle between the fill and the stroke and we'll press X. Here we can just go back to black as our stroke. And so now that we've cut that middle shape out, let's go ahead and do it for this side right here. And then we'll also do it right here as well.
Now that we have this shape, we can toggle between pressing V on our keyboard for the move tool and then just click outside to deselect that shape. Now we want to go back to the pen tool, so go ahead and press P. We'll draw this inner shape right here and then we'll go ahead and close this. Okay. So in order to cut out these shapes, you actually have to fill this in. So we'll go ahead and fill this back in with this cream color. We'll choose the bigger shape, so holding down shift. We'll click on the shape on the left with the shift button still held down. We'll click on this one as well, and then go back to the Pathfinder, press Option, and click. And there you have it. So you can see that the shape is turning out to be exactly like our reference image. So there's still a lot of work to be done on this. Let's go back and taking out the fill so that we can see where we're tracing. Also, if you want to stay on the same layer, that's totally fine. You're more than welcome to create new layers on top of this and you can actually draw on top of these, but I just recommend keeping everything in one layer. You can always move the shapes in front of other shapes. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to create this area right here. This is the golden circle handle. This is going to be created like in two different pieces, so it might be a good idea to create a new layer and then we'll lock our original layer down for now. So what we'll do is we'll use the ellipse tool to, to draw out a new circular shape and then we can always adjust it and then we'll just get it to where we think it is for now. What you could do is you can toggle between command or control. We can take the points and move them. So in this case we'll move it around just a little bit to get the shape and then also if you want to add more points you can always press P for the pen tool and then click anywhere to add a point and then from here you can move this point to get the exact shape that you're going for. And same with this one on this side. And then we can also add another point down here. I'm pressing Command. I'm on a, on a Mac. And then you can move the points around as well. And then if you're getting confused, you can always turn off the bottom layer. So now we're just solely focusing on this one right here. And I think I want to add a point right here. I'm pressing Command to move and adjust this point and then you can just take the handles and adjust as you go. I want to make the inner circle on the inside of this and what we can do is we can hold down command with this shape still selected we can hold down command and you see this double arrow what that means is it's going to copy this go ahead and copy it and then we can adjust the size of the shape by dragging the corners so now we have this smaller shape inside and then you can just adjust it as you go all right so it's not perfect but you kind of get the idea of what i'm going for here and then again we're gonna do the same thing so we'll fill the shape in and it could be any color so i will click on the bottom piece and then holding down shift we'll click on the top piece so it does matter the order of which you click on these shapes because the one on top is going to my Minus from the bottom so we'll hold down option and click on minus and there you have it and the yellow is just a placeholder but you can most definitely change the color to something else the next shape that I want to focus on is the handle on the back what we can actually do is we can create a new layer and we'll turn off the top layer for the back handle here let's go ahead and use the ellipse tool again and this one has a fill so you can go ahead and click on the no fill and then we'll go ahead and adjust this and remember we can add more points okay so now i want to add a point right here and probably another one right here and then down here as well so i want to cut this entire shape because i don't really need this bottom piece what i'll do is i'll press c on my keyboard and i'll cut at the point so i've cut right here on the left and then i'll cut again on this side now we just have this bottom area selected and then we'll go ahead and press delete and so that goes away so now we're left with the top piece so we can go ahead and adjust this and i pressed a on my keyboard for the direct selection tool so now we can keep adjusting as we go 
So you can adjust the handles to fit the shape that you're going for. And if this one doesn't kind of look right, we'll just add another point down here and then we'll move it. And then now on this side, there we go. So this part is a little bit tricky. We can keep moving it down. This one, we might actually not even need this point. So we can go to the minus on your keyboard. So where you can press the minus button and then it'll have this pen tool with the minus. So just click on the point that you want to delete and now it's gone. So now here we are. All right, so we're gonna do the second handle that you see right here. We'll use the ellipse tool again, so let's go ahead and click and drag, and then we'll press V to uh, adjust the corners and to get the size that we want. It's not gonna be exact, and so what you'll actually have to do is we're gonna adjust these, and so let's go ahead and click on the pen tool, and we'll add several anchor points here and then we'll add one down here one down here i'm going to press c on my keyboard click on the point that you want to cut so i clicked on these two areas right here press v on your keyboard and then just go ahead and delete these pieces and there you have it and then so this piece right here is kind of off so you can just take the direct selection tool and then just start adjusting some of the handles on the shape if you feel like you need to add another point somewhere you can do that as well so when you press command on your keyboard again you're going back to the direct selection tool and this is where you can move the points around and adjust the shape to get the exact shape so we'll pick up right here on the bottom. You see this slash right here? That means you can pick up from that open point. Click right here. And so we're actually gonna go and trace the inside of the shape. And then we'll just click and drag going. So I think this shape is actually behind the first handle that we made. So close this, you see that O or zero. Now let's go ahead and close the shape. So now if we turn on our other layers, have these other shapes right here. It's not gonna look as pretty when you're first starting to create something. Just remember that building the shapes takes time to do. We'll just keep building. So typically the way that I tackle any drawing in Illustrator is I start with the bigger shapes first. It's easier to do the bigger shapes and then working your way down to the smaller pieces. So let's create a new layer. Also guys, I know we've been talking about the pen tool, but if you have a tablet or a stylus, you can definitely use the pen tool and draw directly on the screen. For the pen tool, it's N on your keyboard or you can press or you can click on the pencil tool right here. If you're great with the mouse, you can definitely freehand this area right here. You can adjust this, and when you're doing this, you've got to not let go of the button. And then you see this point right here, you can go ahead and close that. So that's not bad. And then you can press Shift Command or Shift Control A to deselect, and then you can pick up and start drawing the other shapes that you need to draw. So we're going to adjust the shapes later, but this is kind of a good way to get more organic flowy shapes and not so stiff from using the pen tool. So there's that um, and we can definitely, so you can see how much more organic the shape looks like. And then we can toggle between the pen tool as well. And then we'll just use the pen tool to create this tag down here. I do like to add different curves in some of the shapes because when you're doing it a little too straight, it just looks a little too stiff. And then we'll go ahead and close this shape and then shift command A to deselect. We'll go ahead and turn the other layers on. Okay, for the bottom layer, I wanna go ahead and fill this in with the beige. So I'll toggle between, press I for the eyedropper tool and that's the color that I get. And then we'll turn off our reference image on the bottom here. I think we can apply a gradient to this and the way we would do that is go to your swatches palette 
and then we can go to open swatch library and then we can go to gradients right here and then we can go to metals and then you'll see make sure you're toggling between the fill and the stroke so we want to fill this in with gold color there we go and then we could do the same for this one and then we can remove the stroke so that we don't have that black line. So there we have it. So this is uh, coming along. So let me know if you have any questions. Hopefully this gave you a good starting point in starting to build some shapes in Illustrator. If you like this content, please consider liking this video and subscribing to this channel. All right, guys, I'll see you next time. Bye.